Okay, so um, good afternoon and welcome to the workshop An Introduction to Public Health England's Packages, Fingertips are um, Fingertips Charts, run by Sebastian Fox, who is a principal data scientist at Public Health England. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you will find this workshop useful. And please feel free to ask us questions using the chat box. Yeah, chat box. Um, Sebastian will answer them during the workshop and please um, keep your microphones muted at all times. I have just posted the GitHub and our Studio Cloud links in the chat box. Just to make you aware, this session is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the NHSR YouTube channel and on the NHSR website. And these links will be sent out at the end of the week. So um, without further delays, I hand over to you, Sebastian. Thank you. Um, hi all, thanks for having me and giving me the opportunity to do this. Um, I'm gonna try sharing my screen. Let's go for it. I am not very familiar with Zoom, so um, do tell me if something isn't working like I think it should be. Um, so can you see my screen? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is a workshop to um, introduce you to two packages that uh, we make, we uh, maintain in PHE, Public Health England. Uh, they're called Fingertips R and Fingertips Charts. Um, I'm Sebastian Fox. I'm a data scientist in the Public Health Data Science team at Public Health England. Um, so what? So this workshop's uh, two hours long, and it's not going to be all me talking. I'm going to talk for about fifteen minutes, then I'm going to set you off on a workbook for about half an hour, which I'm hoping will be quite interactive. And then I will we'll walk you through the answers for fifteen minutes, and there'll be a ten-minute break and we'll kind of repeat again uh, for the last 50 minutes but without my presentation part. Um, so I'm just going to start at the beginning now to give those of you who don't know um, anything about fingertips. I'll just give you a very quick introduction to the website and what it holds um, and essentially give you an introduction to some of the concepts um, that you need to know to be able to uh, get get going with the fingertips R package. Um, then for half an hour we'll focus on fingertips R, um, and then we'll have the break, and then we'll focus on fingertips charts. So at a very high level, uh, fingertips R is essentially a package that helps our users to import the data from the fingertips website into their R environment, so they can do other things with it, like chart it or put it into reports, that kind of thing, or use it for further analysis. And fingertips charts is a visualization package that helps users recreate the visualizations that you see on the fingertips website within your own environment. So then you can use, put those visualizations into reports and or just uh, other analytical tools, or you could even use your own data and put them into those visualizations. Um, so in brief, uh, the Fingertips platform, it's a platform of public health indicators. It contains a, about 1,700 different indicators of public health in England. It has data at different geographies and in a lot of cases can be cut into age groups and sexes and different time periods. Um, for added insight, a lot of the indicators have significance testing, so you can understand how an area is performing compared to their peers or compared to England or compared to the region they sit, depending on how it's cut. Um, and the way the website presents the data um, is in many different ways and hopefully um, can help users uh, with each visualization is kind of a different purpose. 
Um, so this is what the website looks like. That's the URL. If this presentation I'm running through is in the um, projects folder that uh, that is set up in the NHSR uh, our Studio Cloud login. Um, I think there is guidance on how to get there, but we'll, if you don't need to click along with me, but we will need to get there when you want to do the workshop. Um, so this is what the, the website looks like. This is the home page. So the first concept, if this is new to you, that you need to understand is uh, on this home page, there's a list of profiles. So the, the term profiles is important. Um, and these are kind of groups of indicators with a similar theme to each other. <clears throat> um, so these are all different profiles. I'm going to click on this one, which is the Public Health Outcomes Framework, uh, simply because I'm most familiar with it, but I could probably do this with any of them. <clears throat> There's an introduction to this profile, which gives you an understanding of the purpose of it. And if you click on the Start button, um, you, you can start seeing the data um, and the different visualizations. Um, I will go down to that in a sec, but um, so just to give you the next concepts that you need to understand, um, along this gray uh, bar here, there are six different domains. So that's the next um, bit of terminology you need to understand. So you've got overarching indicators, wider determinants of health, health improvement, and so on and so on. Um, within each domain, you have if I just click on that one, you have indicators. So each line here is a different indicator. Um, so that they're the three concepts you really need to understand, profiles, domains, and indicators. Um, and for each of the indicators or domains or profiles, there are this set of visualizations I'm, I'm running through this quite rapidly but i think the main the main takeaway message is profiles domains and indicators um so this these visualizations are essentially what you can recreate using fingertips charts which we will come on to at the end um so this is the overview uh visualization that we're seeing now which is also known as the tartan rug and it's just a way of uh, seeing the latest year, the, the data for the latest year for your area that you're viewing, um, and it's color coded by its significance rating, where each line is a different indicator. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because this is meant to take too long. Uh, so, compare indicators is a way of, uh, is essentially a scatter plot of two indicators, uh, one indicator against another. Uh, a map is simply just a map um, with color coding uh, for each area uh, jog area in the geography that you're um, looking at by significance. Trends is uh, data over time compared to England for an area. I should say additional uh, options within this so these drop downs where you can choose your different area types select your area etc etc um, compare areas is a way to compare areas within a group against either England or the parent region or parent area for those areas um, for, for one indicator uh, and so on and so on, and we'll come to those a bit more. I, I'll actually display, I'll show this one because this is uh, probably the most well-known uh, visualization. This is the area profiles or a spine chart. So this is a summary of many indicators displaying how one particular area compares to a group of other areas. So in this case, this is comparing Derby to, uh, I guess all oh yeah to all the indicates all the same area geography level in England so Derby in this case has a slightly lower than average uh, value for school readiness um, but it's not significantly lower compared to England 
or compared to the median of England. And the darker area is the interquartile range for the areas uh, in England. And the light gray is the full range for all the areas in England. Um, so that's what the fingertips chart, uh, fingertips website holds. So remember profiles, domains, and indicators, they're the main bits. Um, so what does the package do? Fingertips are, so it essentially just translate the imp translates the inputs that the user provides into a URL, uh, which is something you put into your browser bar, and that URL equates to a data set and it imports that data set into your R workspace. So it's quite simple. Um, the package needs the access to the internet. So this won't, this package won't work if you're not connected to the net to a network. Um, and also, as with normal downloading of data, if you're trying to import lots of data, it takes more time. Um, so these are just kind of things to be aware of. Um, this is a typical a URL that's generated by the package. And um, if I went to that URL, this is what it would look like down here. So it, it kind of, it's it look, it's a CSV file essentially, um, where data points are separated by a comma, um, but it just does that translation and importing for you. Um, for that particular URL, this is what the data looks like once it's imported. Um, so you have an indicator ID, the indicator name, a parent code, a parent name, the area code, the area name. So parents and areas is a relationship. Like, so you can see here, uh, Northeast region has a parent of England in this case. Um, and you'll have nine different regions with the parent of England. If I scroll down and you see there's local authorities, East Riding of Yorkshire has a parent of Yorkshire and Humber region. Uh, this field area type uh, helps you know which uh, kind of geography that record is. It's got sex and age group, uh, category type and category, which I'll we won't touch on today because it's a bit less well used. Um, time period for that data point, that data point's value with the lower 95 and upper 95 confidence limits and 99.8 confidence limits if they exist. And you have a count and a denominator, a value note, which is kind of uh, a note if there's anything you need to be aware of about that data point. So it might talk about suppression, it might talk about data issues there. A uh, recent trend, if there's any uh, any analysis done on that, so is it getting better every year or getting worse or nothing significant? Uh, these are the significance testing, so you've got uh, that area compared to England in this case and this area compared to region as in 2006 it was doing better than both. Uh, this field time period sortable is the same as time period, but it's a numeric version because some um, time periods can be uh, like financial years and they will come through as strings. Um, so this is a way of having it numerically and understanding when a, a financial year is ahead or behind of a calendar year, for example. Um, this new data field is a flag for when you, this record is new. Uh, it's recently been added to the database. And if there's a target site, such as uh, vaccination rates or something like that, um, this will, this compared to goal field will indicate when it, whether the indicator is uh, how that's doing compared to the goal, compared to the target. So that's a very quick overview and you'll get to explore that a bit more in the exercises. Um, so this is getting on to R. I'm very close to finishing and very close to setting you off on your first workbook. Um, this is what the main function is uh, within the package, fingertips underscore data. Um, it has uh, inputs for indicator ID, domain ID and profile ID, which uh, refer to the 
three concepts I talked about when we were looking at the website. Uh, the IDs are all numeric codes, so they're all a number. Um, and so the beginning of the workbook will walk you through how you work out which ID, how to find out an ID for an indicator um, to, to get you, give you a flavor of how this package works. Um, area codes is if you want to just filter your final data set just for a particular area, say Nottingham or, or Bristol or something like that, you can add an area code in there and it will just return only those records. Uh, area type ID is uh, another number um, that you put in and that tells, uh, tells the function to only look for or to re return data for this specific area type because you can have area types for local authorities or you can have it for CCGs or STPs or regions. So that's a way of specifying that. Um, and parent area type ID is, for example, in the data I showed you before, we had upper tier local authorities with a parent area type of region. So you can also uh, marry those two areas up, or you can force it, force it to return those uh, using, using those uh, inputs. And I will not talk about the last three because four because they'll be covered in the exercises. Okay, <clears throat> some common problems uh, before essentially setting you up. Um, so not every indicator is available for every area type. Um, and we this is covered in the exercise. So you, there are some indicators that you can't see at CCG level, for example, because the underpinning data that creates them isn't available at, at that geography or because uh, the profile owners don't think it's useful to, or the, or the stakeholders don't think it's useful to present the data at that level. Um, sometimes you might get an uh, request an indicator and you might have more records than you're expecting. So when you add up all the local authorities for a particular year, you get a really big number. And that's because that could be because you might have like persons, males and females within that data set. So you need to make sure you explore the data before you do anything with it. Um, the database, this feeds off changes on a daily basis, oh, on a monthly basis, sorry. Um, it's generally very consistent, but you might find you have a script that works one day, but the next week it doesn't work. And that's because it's working off a live database. Um, if you're familiar with the website, you'll understand kind of when data goes missing or whether one week it was presented at uh, April 2019, upper tier local authorities, and then it was updated to April 2020, for example, and 2019 goes missing. Um, parent area type ID, we'll cover this in the exercises. And if you're still having problems and, and that's not covered by what I've just said, then please do uh, raise an issue at this website on GitHub. Um, just depending on your uh, experience with R, it's a reminder that if you have trouble with any of the functions, you can just put a question mark in front of it and then it will give you the documentation in your window. Um, and a little hint that you can double click on the function and press F1 as well if you've got it written in a script and that does that for you. Okay, so that's the intro. Um, I think Beatrice has provided a URL to start the exercises. So if you have access to um, this project, I think it's called NHSR Fingertips. Um, if you click on Fingertips R Workbook, there is a hopefully well-documented script with questions and exercises to walk through. Um, if you could start doing that for half an hour, and I think I'll give you a five-minute warning when we're, we're at 10 to, and, um, and then I'll stop it at 10 to, and feel free to 
I think, I don't know what the rules are. If you can come off mute and speak or you, you can just write a message in Zoom, I'll, I'll just be monitoring the Zoom chat. And I should say that I've got a colleague, Sam Dunn, I think she's on the call, um, who might also be helping, but I know she's had internet problems today. Um, so does that make sense? So if you open up the Fingertips R workbook, there is a Fingertips R answers book as well, which I will go through. If you really are stuck and you don't want to ask for help, you can look at that as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and just watch Zoom. And do shout if you have any questions. I know it's horrible just sitting there with nobody there. But just to let people know as well, because I'm working off a work computer, I have to be on the VPN to get on to the API PHE. I've just realised because it didn't work. Some people might find that when they try to run it and it says API not available. I don't know. OK, that's useful. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry, I, I was in my own little world when I was trying to talk that. Is it fingertips or workbook or fingertips charts workbook or both? First, the fingertips are workbook Thank and you. we'll do fingertips charts in the second half. Sebastian, sorry, somebody in the chat saying that they've got an API problem. I think somebody on my trust has also had a problem too, even though they're on the VPN. I don't okay. understand that. Hmm. I'll um, ask um, the, the manager and I'll get back to you shortly. 
hopefully. Okay. It Are might. You... Sorry, go on, Mike. Oh, sorry. I was going to say it might not be helpful to say this. I've been having intermittent uh, intermittent issues like that, and also accessing the Power BI reports on and off for the past uh, couple of months working from home. But it sorted itself out last week, so I I don't know how helpful that is. Um, reset the cache uh, on the Explorer helped. I don't know. Okay, that. Um... So, Elaine, are you able to say, are you doing it on the R Studio Cloud workbook? Uh, no, it's in the R, I've just got R Studio on my computer, so I downloaded it. Uh, okay. Um, right. And do you happen to know what version are you using? Have you just downloaded the package now? Yes. Uh, hmm. I do not know whether I'll be able to fix this in this session. Are you, a, are you able to use the R Studio Cloud version? I can have a go. <laughs> uh, I think that's the easiest solution in this session, if you can. Sorry, um, at the part where it says execute the select indicators, close bracket, well, brackets function, uh, and locate the low birth weight of term babies indicators. Yeah. Uh, so I, I run that and it just says at the bottom in blue, select indicators. 
uh, yeah. like a... And then if you if you if you run that, does a pop up a uh, uh, browser pop up? Yeah. I can should I demo there. Oh, righty ho. Yeah, that was loading. Ah, oh, sweet, righty ho. Okay. Uh, yeah, that took ages to load. Um, um, I, I thought I messed something up. No, thank you. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Good. Um, and so Stephen has asked um, how to get out of it once that's happened. Um, okay, got the pop-up, but then it closed. Okay, let me just... Uh, test that and I can see you've got your hand raised Emily so I'll come to that in a second um, I'll share my screen Stephen while I do this so you can see what I'm doing So you might have done click that and then closed it, I guess. So where are we here? Okay. So if you click in the console down here, Stephen, and then press escape, hopefully that should get you out of it. It would be worse if that does. Yeah, they okay. worked. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. If you yeah, it would be worth running it again and doing selecting the indicator again and pressing done because you you'll get a different response in the console when you do that um, thank you okay no problem uh emily do you still have a question yeah so when i run the select indicators function the another like web page opens but it just says connection refused oh okay uh that's new on me. And are you doing this in the cloud or are you doing yeah. this on? Oh. Can you uh, can you close it and close it and then try it again? Hopefully it's just intermittent. Mine did that because it had a pop up blocker. So you need to disable the pop up blocker. Uh, OK, I'll do that. Thanks. Thank you, Amanda. I might need to make a note of these in the documents. So does it not matter about the domain name because we're just selecting the indicator as it were? Uh, in that instance, it's just an example of what that function does. We're not going to do anything with it. But if you were doing it that way, it then may matter. Then we would care about the domain because, well, what's yeah. it looking at? Thanks. Sorry, stupid question. That's okay. No, no, good questions.
Okay, I'm going to give a five minute warning now. So, well, yeah, at two, I've got two computers open. One of them says 2.45, one says 2.43. I think that's blown my mind. <laughs>
Okay, I think that's time if we want to have enough time to have a break. Um, I'm concerned I gave you a five minute warning while I was on mute. I'm not sure. But <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to share my screen now. And then. I'm going to take you through the answer book. So you should all have access to that. I know, I think I've just had a message from Beatrice that this hasn't worked for her. Um, so I might, if, if I run through this now and it doesn't work, then I'll have to make some changes to it um, for you. But um, let's just hope it does. Okay, so I'll see if I can get all the way through. There's a lot. A lot to go through. Okay, so um, I, the first uh, lines four. I, when I refer to the lines, I'm just down the left hand side. You can see the line numbers. Um, so that's how I refer to them. So line four and seven are um, just either installing the package if you don't have it or loading it. Okay, so this is, and uh, I think this was given to you. This is how you, this is a simple query, um, getting indicator ID 30, uh, 90356 area type ID 202 and this view function just brings it up into your um, this top left area so you can see the actual data that you've put in that DF object. Um, not going to look Forward to, oh yeah, okay, so the question here was, do the number of records make sense to you? So if I click here, you can see in DF there are uh, 1,288 records. So I've said um, there are 151 local authorities and nine regions. If I run this command, which you, you don't necessarily have to know, but it's a useful one to know about, uh, this is a basically a cross tab of that data frame, time period and area type. And you can see uh, there are eight years, there's 151 records in the county and UA area type for each year. There's one England record and there's nine region records for each year. So that 1,288 makes sense. Okay, so this section is on how you work out an indicator ID. So this was about uh, low birth weight and of term baby. So the simplest method is using the select indicators function. And hopefully most of you will have had this. So this is useful when you're just interacting with um, with R Studio, rather than if you've got a script because if you write a script and you just want to run it all in one go this will interrupt it so you, you wouldn't want to do this in that situation oh, i can't spell first wait oh, it's probably got two words okay so and if i selected that one you can see on the left hand side that indicator id has been selected and i can press done and somehow I need to get back to where I was and then you can see that indicator ID has been printed there so I could use that to assign indicators to an object and then use it later on. Um, if you're confident with filtering um, you can run a command like this so this uses the indicators function um, and you'll be able to see, so indicators brings back a list of all the indicators available. And then I've done something here from, uh, which if you're familiar with dplyr, um, it's piping. So it puts the output of this function into the input of the next function, the first argument of the next function. So then I'm using filter from dplyr and I'm saying I want indicator ID to equal 20101, and then it's just printing the output below. So that's the different versions of that indicator that are available because it's in multiple different domains. 
Um, so here I talk about not all indicator IDs, uh, not all indicators have all area type IDs. So Nor was asking questions about um, why are there multiple area types uh, map to parent area types. And that's just the nature of geographies. So if you have a, a small area, it can map to it could potentially map to many, like you could puzzle it together to map to lots of bigger areas. Um, so uh, I, most of my work where I use this, I use uh, upper tier local authorities. So you can see that uh, 302, which is the latest version of upper tier local authorities maps to government regions and PHE centers, uh, deprivation decile boundaries, combined authorities. Yep, yeah, so there's multiple different um, versions. Okay, <clears throat> how do you know what error types I what error type IDs are available for an indicator? So you can go through the website. So let's go to I think it's here. And if you go to the definitions page. You can see here on the top row, you can see your 20101, which is the same uh, one that we keep talking about. So that's good. Um, and oh, uh, how do I get back there? Go away. Okay. So you can see that if I have county and UA, um, selected, I think this is a bit on that, if I have county and UA selected, I have those, uh, those are the five parent error types I talked about. When we looked at the error types command, if I have, say I chose district, then I have slightly different area types here. So there's different, different area types and different parent area types, depending on your area types. I said area types are a lot. Um, oh, and then, oh, okay, I missed that bit. Okay, so then in the indicator area types, oh, here we go, okay. So <clears throat> this is, uh, so indicator area types is a function to, which tells you which indicators a map to which area types. I think that's what this section's about. So if I run this, um, you can see for our indicator 20101, um, these are the area types available for it. So indicator area types just brings back indicator ID and area type ID. And I've just attached this. Um, when you work through the answers, um, I've just joined it to the area types function um, to, to be able to get the area type names to make this a bit more understandable. Um, okay, so we now see from that that I can also get this indicator at 302 level in the area type ID 302. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of time but in this case, if you look at the list, 220 isn't available in there. So when I run this command, um, and then I run n row df, I get zero. So n row is the number of rows uh, in that object. So you can see there's zero uh, there. Um, here, I think I just explained this a uh, bit. This is about uh, parent area types. So we've discussed how an area type ID maps to multiple parent area types. So if I run this for a different indicator and I've got area type ID 165 in there, so that's CCGs from 2019. And then I just do a table of area types in that data set. You can see I've got CCGs 1920, England and NHS region local office. So, and I'll run this code. 
and then print that same table sets for the same indicator, the same area type ID, but I've I've uh, supplied my own parent area type ID. So you can see that the CCGs are there and you can see that the England is there, but STP pre April 20 is there now instead of NHS region local office. So this is just an example of um, for each indicate for fingertips data, the minimum it, information you need to supply is in, uh, either indicator ID, domain ID, or profile ID, and area type ID. And then it defaults to a, its own parent area type ID, but you can also supply a parent area type ID to force it to um, provide one that you want. Hopefully that makes sense. Every area type has a default parent area type. That's, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so you can pass multiple, um, indicators into the command so here i've just put i've created a vector of two indicators and then i use this ind as the input here um, and i run that command and that is getting uh, if i run this table you can see the time period and the indicator name so these are the two indicators you get healthy life expectancy at birth and you get life expectancy at birth. And these are the number of records in each year for those indicators in that data set. Um, okay. So you can also provide a domain ID. And I'm not gonna run these for the sake of time. I'm just gonna show you um, what this looks like. So, uh, so here, this is the domain ID. You, you, it's probably rather than doing it this way, it's better to do it in code because this abbrevi it abbreviates it if you print it in the console. But you'll have to trust me that that's what this number is. Um, and if you ran that, it would bring back instead of indicator ID equals, I replaced that with domain ID equals, and that brings back a whole domain of, of data rather than an indicator of data. And the same goes for profile ID. Okay, so just the final two bits, I think. Uh, there's this where I've we've done this command before, but I've added this command uh, argument rank equals true on the end, and that's useful because it applies a few more fields onto the end of your data set. Um, and I will quickly show you the main one. Uh, I'm doing that. Um, yeah. And I can see we're slightly over time, which is my bad. I think I waffled a bit at the start. Ooh. I crash. Let's see what's going on. Okay, instead of trying to recover this, I've got this on my desktop. So, um, it has happened in the session um, in the morning as well. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'll just load the packages. I will go down to. Uh, and I'm in the wrong one. Answers. Rank equals true. Okay. I'm guessing that's an R, uh, the cloud thing rather than a package thing. I would definitely assume so. Yeah. 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 That's come back. Okay. Cool. So rank equals true. It's not a very good well-named argument, but it adds three columns to the end. It adds polarity, rank, and area value counts. I think the polarity is the main one um, out of this. So it tells you, it gives you a bit of information about that indicator. So it's saying it's a 
red, amber, green indicator where low is good. So this is fuel poverty. So it's it's better to be lower essentially. Um, whereas you might have something like life expectancy where it, it's better to be higher and like it's perceived better to be higher. Uh, I won't go into these numbers because they're I think they're rarely used. Um, but if you want to know more about them, do ask. And then this final part is this URL only equals true command. And this just brings back the URL. It doesn't bring back the data. And you can take that URL and you can put it in your browser. And that gives you the data in your browser. And so what that's useful for reporting errors. So you can understand whether the error is occurring like at, in your R Studio end, or is this is a way of testing that the data is actually there on the API that, and therefore the error is if, it, if the data is here, there's something wrong between your your environment of R and getting the data in. Whereas if the data is not there, you know that it's something further upstream. And I won't go through these. But these are kind of you can work through these um, at a later point, but these are just ways of uh, adding more insight to your data. Um, so you can have, you can add deprivation decile onto it and you can find out other uh, similar, uh, similar areas to the areas that you're interested in. Um, okay, I think that's the end of part one. I think if we reconvene at quarter past, um, at, or you can start as soon as you like. Uh, the first task will be to start working through the fingertips charts workbook, um, which is all about the visualizations on the website. Um, okay, thank you.
Okay, if you're back, just to officially move it on, um, yeah, please begin working on the fingertips charts workbook. Um, hopefully it's self-explanatory, but as before, if you've got any questions, put them in the chat window or come off mute. Thank you. I will uh, give you a five minute warning, um, but if we do this for half an hour, so at quarter two, I'll, uh, we can, I'll take you through the work, uh, answers. Thanks.
I'm hoping silence is a good thing. Um, that's five minute warning. Then I will go through the answers.
Okay. Um, time. I'm going to call time. I was responding to Rachel in the chat, but I don't think I'm going to manage it in the time I need. Um, I'll do it verbally if Rachel's listening. Um, so Rachel's asked if you can only use these charts with fingertips R data. I think that's my understanding of the code, essentially. So you can color the significance. Uh, so where where there are any colors of red, amber, green, that kind of thing. Um, does Can you do that with bespokely calculated data or does it have to be fingertips R? And the answer is, I think you just need a field. I was checking this and I didn't get as far into it, but you do need a field. Um, I think you just need a field with like better, worse, not compared or not significant as the um, values within it. And then it will apply the color coding, uh, the same color coding to it. Um, and just in addition, you made a comment about fingertips are comparing to England. Um, just in case you hadn't seen it, you may have seen it. It also provides a comparison to the parent area as well. So it's not just England. So hopefully that answers your question, but I'm happy to um, chat about this separately. Uh, you did also ask, a, uh, make a statement about creating confidence intervals and significance testing that I just, as a bit of publicity, there is another um, PHE package called PHE indicator methods which I've just put into the chat window, um, which can help you do that. Um, and the final thing to talk about from the chat is Stephen uh, was asking earlier about, he was thinking about how to incorporate fingertips R into their um, pipeline, their analytical pipeline. So he was asking questions about um, linking postcodes to different geographies and asking if fingertips are did that. Um, it doesn't, and I've pointed him towards a package called Postcodes IOR, which I'm going to share my screen now, and then I'll start going through the answers. Um, <clears throat> so while you're doing that, I went on to say so Postcodes IOR links to the postcodes.io API in the same way that fingertips are links to the fingertips API. So it's just a programmatical way of accessing the, the database behind the postcodes IO site. And so here is an example of the data it brings back. So you can apply, you could send some postcodes. This is just via the API, but the R package makes it more user-friendly for our users. So you could supply a postcode and then it will give you this information. So Eastings, Northings, country, NHS, uh, HA, which I should know what that means, but I don't. You got PC, uh, PCT there. And then if I scroll down, you've got CCG and you get a few of the, um, the codes for it too. So that's a flag for that if people want to look into that too. Right, I'm going to try and quickly go through fingertips charts now. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to do it locally. Okay, so the beginning is importing data sets and uh, sorry, in loading libraries. I'm going to import the this domain, which hopefully you'll manage to do. Okay, so this is using the fingertips R function. Um, this beginning bit, I think this is all done for, oh, this is, or I'm in the work, but aren't I? let's go to the answers. Yeah, so the beginning bit's all done for you as an example. So this is, uh, it starts off ordering your indicators. Uh, hopefully this kind of made sense to you, um, but I don't, it, this is a lot to do with data manipulation and not much to do with the, the package itself, but um, you should be able to apply some of these methods if you are wanting to do this locally. So these are this is the order that we've come up with, which is the same order as on the website, which I won't go into, but 
um, you'll have to take my words. So using this factor and then applying levels, the levels that we've just created, that's how you apply the order to that data set. Okay, so we're saying we want to filter the indicators for the latest time periods uh, and Southwest region and the area name in Southwest. So <clears throat> that's doing that. Um, so we've created this DF overview, overview object, which I won't look at because of time. Um, and this is a reminder to how you look at the documentation to help you um, know what to put, it, put in as the inputs for the functions. And so I run this overview function with the inputs. I think I supplied these to you in the exercise. And this is what the overview looks like. So if it's unclear on the small window, you can expand it and it will become a little bit clearer. Um, so this is a, if, if you're not familiar with ggplot, this is this is drawn in ggplot. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with saving images from ggplot, um, like you might be concerned that like some of the text is overlapping or it looks a bit messy, like if it's like this, um, like it's not very clear what's going on. So this is all about dimensions. And so if you're saving an image, you can play around with the figure height and the figure width and um, these things will become clearer. So it's just, it, it's what it's trying to do at the moment is just fit the image into this window, into your viewer. Um, but the, all the font sizes will remain as it's been told to do. So I think, yeah, so this is, don't be concerned if it's not very clear when you view it in your window is all I'm trying to say. Um, and then that image that, <coughs> excuse me, looks like the one at this link, which I won't go to. Um, so now this is compare indicators. Um, I think I give you this again. Um, this view plot data is just to show you this is what the um, structure of the object going into the compare indicators function needs to look like. Um, so you have two indicators side by side and area codes down the side. Um, and so running this function, I think oh, I asked you to fill in uh, X, Y and area here. So that's what they look like. Um, they're just the field names unquoted for each of those. Um, and so that's what uh, that image looks like and that should be the same on the website. Uh, so going on to map data, oh, producing a map. So fingertips charts allows you to produce a static map and an interactive map. Um, I will walk you through going, finding your own boundaries because you might want to do this for something else and it's a little, little bit complicated. I tried to walk you through it with the, the um, workbook. So this is the open geography portal that the ONS, um, uh, that the ONS look after. So under boundaries, you could go, I won't do the example in the workbook, but most of you will probably want health boundaries. You might want uh, CCGs and say you want 2019 boundaries. You click there. Um, and then you've got the 2019 boundaries here. And I believe they're all the same except for the resolution. Oh, here we go. So there it says full resolution. Uh, and then if I keep going down, oh, let's go to that one. And that's generalized 20 meters. So that, that will be a smaller file than the top one, for example. So if I do that, I click on that one. Uh, you see over here, there's an API button. 
And if you use the GeoJSON link as your URL, um, that will, you can import that into R. Okay, oh, wrong one. So if I use the ONS API, I can provide that as the ONS API address here. And um, that is downloading the shape file in the API that I've provided it and drawing a map of the indicator. I've provided area code to it here. And then you have your map. So I print that. Um, and that will be the same as the one at this URL. And then uh, there is an interactive version of this. I don't, I won't go through the inputs. You can work through it, but you can see it does the same process. Um, and then it produces a leaflet map, which you may be familiar with. And you can see, see if you're creating HTML reports, for example, this allows you to um, create something interactive for users. Okay, the trends chart. I will just run this. Uh, so basically, the all the asks I gave were to fill in the field names that um, that I'd left out. That was hopefully a little bit more straightforward than the first exercise. So that's what the trends chart looks like. You can see uh, for this indicator, uh, Wigan was. Uh, lower than England for a number of years, then it was not significantly different for England for a couple of years, and it was worse for England than England in 2013, but it's gotten back lower again in 15 and 16. And if I skip this, because we've only got two more minutes, I want to go to uh, the final one, which is the area profiles. So <clears throat> this is importing data from the inhale um, domain or profile, I think. No domain. And importing the order of the indicators and applying those or that order to your indicators. So we can display it how it's displayed on the website. Because it's a domain, it takes a little bit more time to import the data. Okay, so just show you the data before I put it into the area profiles function. So it's just quite a standard, um, that's the standard fingertips are data format and I filtered it just for the latest time periods available using the time period sortable um, field group by indicator which is quite a common this is quite a common bit of code so that's just saying for each indicator I want the latest time period and then I put it through the function and um, and then view it, and then you get the spine chart. And there are fun there are arguments in there to control the arrows, the trend arrows, and the layout of all the, the uh, columns of text. I think I'm going to stop there because we've reached time. Um, but I don't. I, I'm happy to stay on. I don't know if this uh, meeting will stay open, but I can stay on for another five minutes and take any questions if people want. So we had a question from um, Noor, and he was asking, once you have saved a map as output, can you also get an interactive map as output? Or do you um, within R? Yeah, OK. So you can, I guess you got to think about what you're going to do with that. So you can save a map as a PNG, and you can save an interactive map as an HTML. So you could then, like if you're working with with uh, kind of other people on a report, you can supply the HTML to them by email and they can look at it. But ultimately you have to think about how you're gonna use it. Um, so if it's in a 
static PDF report, then it's a, it's a bit more like you, that map's less useful. But if it's in a, a website that you're making, then it becomes a bit more useful. So you can save interactive maps separately that you can then view outside of R. But yeah, just think about the, the use case for it. I hope that helps. Cool. Okay, doke. So thank you, Sebastian, for today's session. I really enjoyed it, and thank you for sharing your materials with us. I have just put the link to the evaluation form in the chat box. Please, please fill it in, as your opinion is really valuable to us and because we need your feedback so the NHSR conference can continue to happen in the years to come. Thank you for helping me do this, Beatrice. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Cool. <laughs> when, when I knew about fingertips at, at the time, I was going to save by doing all the analysis. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, no and if anyone's got, anyone's got any questions, feel free to get in touch directly. Thank you. Cheers, dude. Thanks. Uh, I've got another meeting I'm late to, so thanks. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, no, dude. Wait a second. I'll, I'll try to send you again the link then. Does it work now by any chance? Oh yeah, it's working. Okay, dog. I'll I'll stay for a second just in case people are copy pasting the link. Okay, well, <laughs> no problem. It's a pleasure. Bye everyone, have a good day.